today. And I can tell you for a fact that our founding fathers were very biblically literate, and they believed in Proverbs 29, verse 2, that said, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Well, I can tell you, I have a dog in this fight. Yeah. 388 years of ancestry in this country, and I can tell you, I am mourning because of some of the things that are taking place in our country and in our state. But I can tell you that something good is happening when this many people will gather when it's 14 degrees above zero out here at 7.30 in the morning. Our founding fathers and incidentally our founding mothers, because they were influential as well, decided that we would not have a king in America, that the only king that could be trusted to not be a tyrant was King Jesus. And so they decided instead of having a monarchy, that we would have a constitutional republic. And incidentally, it was the colonies, and for anyone that has missed it, right above the door here, you'll see a seal that says the Republic of New Hampshire. It was these colonies that came together and formed a federal government, not the other way around. And now it seems that we as states, as republics, as colonies, will have to get together again to reform that national government. Good. Yeah. Now what kind of national government did we have before the Constitution was written? It was the Articles of Confederation. They were ratified by the states March 1st, 1781. They were signed by such statesmen as John Hancock and Samuel Adams. It was an attempt to loosely knit the 13 states together. The Articles of Confederation declared, whereas the delegates of the United States of America in Congress assembled did on the 15th day of November in the year of our Lord, 1777, and in the second year of the independence of America, agree on certain Articles of Confederation and perpetual union between the states. And on March 1st, 1781, as that was ratified in Article 1 of the Confederation, the style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. Article 2, each state retains, listen up now, its sovereignty! It's freedom! And every power, jurisdiction, and right which is not by this confederation expressly delegated to the United States in Congress assembled. Article 3. The said states hereby severally enter into a verb league of friendship with each other, their common defense, the security of their liberties, and their mutual and general well-being, binding themselves to assist each other against all force offered to or attacks made upon them, of any of them, on account of religion, sovereignty, trade, or any other type of pretense whatsoever. And how many of us know today that James Madison, in Federalist Papers 45, said the powers delegated by the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few! And they're defined. Those which are to remain in the state governments are numerous and indefinite. Therefore, when the federal government begins to intrude upon the rights and liberties of the people, it is the responsibility of the states to resist. I am asking our representatives inside here to resist. We know obviously that the way the federal government tries to keep the states in subjection and comply with a lot of despotic machinations is by the use of things such as porculous bills and stimulus bills and all these other things which I hope and pray will be rejected. I do believe
believe in the work of our third president, Thomas Jefferson. He said, my reading of history convinces me that most bad governments result from too much government. That the government that is best is the government that governs least. Thomas Paine, the man that wrote Common Sense, which influenced most of the colonists to join the cause of freedom and liberty, he said that those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Should we expect to achieve a victory in America without supporting it? We seek something that has never been, nor never shall be. And one of the great statesmen, John C. Calhoun, said government has within it a tendency to abuse those powers. Yes. Has those powers been abused? Yes. Will it stop? Yes. Now we have many signs out there and one in the back that says live free or die. I do not consider that to just simply be a slogan. I consider it to be my God-given pledge. And I encourage you in that pledge today as I encourage our representatives who are not our rulers but our servants to vote appropriately and to vote for HCR 6.